All right, finally some kokanee on the graph here. Hope we can find some, catch some here. There's a lot of fish here at 50 feet, so I think I'm gonna go deeper. So I keep marking them down there at 50. Oh, there's fish, might wanna drop down. Yeah. I saw him down at 50, and that's the advantage of a downrigger, man. You can just drop right down to him, get him. As soon as I dropped on him, they, they went for it. Sweet. And that puts the first kokanee in the boat on the downrigger today. So today I'm gonna go over downriggers versus dropper rigs. Oh, and he's off. Nice. Well, there's still a lot of fish down there. Down at 50 today. Surprisingly deep for spring. But this side of the lake's kind of muddy. And there might be chironomids popping on that mud on the bottom. There we go. So let's go ahead and bring this back up and uh, see if we can get another. I got the dropper at about. 25, 30 feet down. I think I'm gonna turn around and go back through those fish. Never leave fish to find fish, especially on a day like today where I've been trying to find fish for an hour. I haven't found anything. And I was looking shallow. That was the wrong thing to do when they were out deep. Oh, there's another fish. Boy, they are really down deep today. As soon as I'm getting that downrigger down towards the bottom, I'm not even marking them. I think they're feeding so tight to the bottom right now. Woo! Got them. Oh, here's some fish at what, 15, 20 feet deep. Bring this up, see if I can get them on the dropper. And that's the nice thing about droppers, you can just bring it right up to them. You don't have to worry about cranking up the down rear and then cranking up the rod. You can just do just the rod. It's easy. Here's some fish on the bottom. Right down by the down rigger. Didn't pick up any of these ones, unfortunately. Let's see if we'll pick up some off that down rigger down there. Nope, nothing so far. There's another school in the middle here. They're really scattered there from 20 feet down to the bottom. There the bite, I saw that. Didn't get either. Oh. oh, come on, you guys, you're following it. They're following it. There we go. There we go. So as you can see, that downrigger really does offer an advantage. Oop, there's one on the dropper too. I doubled up. Oh, I lost that fish. So the advantage of a downrigger is obviously you get very precise depth control and you don't have to fight the lead when you're bringing the fish up there. So that fish was able to leverage himself off because he was fighting the lead. Ooh, now he wakes up. <laughs> there we go, jump in the net for me. But yeah, so a downrigger gives you precision. So I know that I'm fishing exactly at the depth I want to. I'm not fighting the lead. But the disadvantage is it takes a lot longer to pull the downrigger ball up, drop the downrigger ball down, clip in, clip out. Uh, it just adds a lot more time to it. And you really can't capitalize on these really tightly packed schools. Whereas with the dropper rig, you can really go up and down follow those fish a little bit easier, but you're guessing at your depth. You're not absolutely positive where your gear is at. You can use a general rule, and I have lots of videos on droppers and estimating the depth that you're at, but you never know for sure. And when you make turns, um, you know, depending if it's an outside rod or inside rod, 
uh, you may end up going quite a bit deeper or shallower depending on whether or not it's the inside or outside rot. And of course, another disadvantage of downriggers is that you have to buy the downrigger. Um, it's a very expensive setup. I am going to bring up that other rod real quick. So that was simple. You see, I brought up my dropper rig here. I've got a sliding weight rig and then a bumper from Polson Cascade Tackle. I clip in my flasher or dodger and I got my hoochie. It's just very simple. I can just bring gear up, drop it right back down, put it right back in the strike zone. I don't have to deal with a bunch of other steps. So it's very efficient. I don't have to install anything special. I'm just using a normal rod holder, a normal kokanee rod. Um, I mean, all I'm really investing in is a sliding rig and um, a couple of bead chain swivels and some lead cannonballs and I'm good to go. <laughs> Meanwhile, with a downrigger, I've got to first drop back my gear and at the same time I need to bring my downrigger ball back up from the bottom where I was. And then I've got to take my clip, which I've added a two foot long clip to make it easier for me to reach down and grab that clip and clip it in. And then now I've got to drop this back down after I get this straightened out. So you can see there's a lot more steps to this. It adds more time and takes away from your fishing a little bit, but now I can drop down to the exact depth I need to. I'm gonna go right down to 40 feet, just four feet off the bottom. I mean, I can't fish with confidence four feet off the bottom with a dropper rig. I just can't do it, I'm gonna snag up. Whereas this, no problem. So I got this at 40 feet and 44 feet of water because these fish are feeding really tight on the bottom. Tighten it down, there we go. And now we're gonna see if we can't spot another school out here. All right, here's a couple fish. Not a big school, but there's a few fish in there. Oh, there we go. Got one. Nice. Tell you, this is amazing. Bring that up a little bit. So I mounted a Cannon Lake Troll here. I like the vertical spool on it. Um, it just makes it more compact rather than the horizontal spools that you see a lot on the Scotties, although Cannon has some like that too. I've shortened the boom to make it easier for me to reach and also to put less pressure on the hole of the kayak since there's less leverage. And I've mounted that using a system called the V-Lock system. Oops, I think I'm hung up on my own line. Yeah, I am. Not gonna worry about that yet. I had to make a shark turn there because the there's a big ledge and I didn't want to hang up on it. But we'll get rid of that in just a sec. That is a nice kokanee there. That's a fatty. There you go. That's a nice one. All right. So there's the downrigger ball. You can see this school of kokanee. I wouldn't be surprised to see that rod go off any moment. It's a massive school, but look how tight these kokanee are to the bottom. Oh, there's fish right there. There we go. Just like that. Crazy. Whew. This guy has got some spunk. There we go. Got him. Destroying them today. These ones are fat. Chunksters. I'm basically just pounding one or two little schools here to death. And uh, it's paying off. So here's my downrigger ball. It's a six pounder. I made my own 150 pound monofilament uh, clip system. And I've got the Scotty mini clips. The Scotties are really the best for this because they're just full foolproof you just 
put it all the way to the bottom. That's the perfect amount of tension for kokanee gear. And the reason I made this two feet long is, see, I can now pull this all the way up, this clip up here. It comes with, the lake troller comes with a cannon downrigger clip, which is really tricky with its little teeth. You got to get just the right tension. Whereas this, with the Scotties, it's just put it on the bottom, it's set to go. I made this longer because obviously I can sit in my chair and reach it and I can deal with this right here without having to lean over the side of the boat. But also this bigger slack makes it easier to detect the bite because they can slap it like that. These kokanee are feeding hard to the bottom today and you know this is one of those times where a downrigger really might make the difference between going home with just a few fish and going home with the limit. And there we go. Oh. Yep, there's fish. Another one on the counter. Got him on that turn. So I used a system to mount uh, my downrigger to my kayak called the V-Lock system, which is the machined aluminum locking system that allows you to mount a downrigger on a vertical surface. It uses a uh, basically a plate, an aluminum plate that locks into that machined aluminum piece. And it's perfect because it allows me to utilize these walls on the kayak, which I reinforced inside the kayak with some marine seaboard. And I just don't have the gunnel space that a normal boat does. So it's really nice. And there we go, another one in the boat on the downrigger. This downrigger fishing up here this year, well, there's a bunch of kokanee at 15 feet, has really rattled my uh, belief in the dropper rigs because I was so confident in the dropper rigs for a long time and I still am, um, especially when there's big schools feeding suspended. But for these fish that are feeding tight to the bottom that seem to be more active than these suspended schools, the downrigger is really where it's at. There we go. There we go, got one. Still got him. This will be number seven for the downrigger. Nothing on the dropper, although we did hook one earlier. Ooh, he's putting up a fight. Oh, we got one on the dropper. Yeah, I got a double. Nice. All right. Still got that guy? Yep. Definitely a lot different fight with that weight on there. That's the that's the advantage of a downrigger big time is the... Off the bottom. Okay. Oh, got him. All right, dropper got one today. So yeah, I'm gonna do something very different now to redeploy the downrigger. Rather than going through the nonsense of bringing up the downrigger ball and going back into the clip and then dropping it back down, I'm gonna leave the downrigger ball down where it's at right now, down at 40 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and do my normal setback. 40 feet and I have what's called a weighted stacker rig which is essentially a two foot long 150 pound piece of monofilament with crimps on it. I've got a big heavy duo lock with a four ounce cannonball carabiner and my normal clip. So the first thing I'll do is go and clip the carabiner into the downrigger cable and I've switched mine out for Power Pro because it's easier for me to cut in an emergency and it's also a little bit narrow diameter. Now I can just drop this down to the bottom and that weight's going to carry all the way down to the downrigger ball for me and I don't have to bring that downrigger ball up so it simplifies it for me and once I'm at the bottom just set this in the rod holder here and tighten it down and now we can wait for a fish to hit it. If you have problems getting it to release, you can just use a heavier cannonball. Uh, that way there's a little more tension. There we go. That one. <laughs> Knew that was going to happen.
And that's number 10 for the day. All on the downrigger except for one. Crazy. And all of my stacker rigs are right here. So I just gotta grab the, the little carabiners. I pop them off and I can bring them back into the boat. And it's easy. So I'll have several sets of those extra weighted stacker rigs so I don't have to bring the ball up. I can catch three or four fish and then bring them back all up and retrieve them all. Well, that does it for me today. I got my 10. Uh, all but one came on the downrigger today. It just seemed like those fish feeding tight to the bottom. I still have a lot of faith in the dropper rigs, especially on these suspended schools of fish that are actively feeding, but today the downrigger really made a difference, primarily because of precision. Um, that's the real advantage it gave me. It still took me longer to get my gear down there um, using traditional downrigger techniques, but with those added weighted stacker rigs, it almost takes away all of the advantage of a dropper rig. I do feel like dropper rigs will cover more of the water column as they swing up and down as you change speeds and turn. So they can be a really good way to search for active fish. But if you know where the fish are and they are actively feeding, especially tight to the bottom, a downrigger is going to come out on top. I'll put links to all of the dropper setups as well as videos explain how I run the dropper setups. Um, the downriggers I was using and I'll even post a video right here that shows how I mounted this downrigger using that V-Lock system. If you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye guys.